Hello, I'm Barbara Barron. I'm the owner and founder of Classic Rug Collection. I started my company 22 years ago in Brooklyn, New York, and I specialize in very fine, one-of-a-kind custom rugs. Several years ago, I spoke to people at the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation. They were looking for someone to work with Wright's designs to create a new collection for the 21st century. There hadn't been a new rug collection for many, many years. And what they did not want was for someone to merely copy the previous designs that Wright had done. They wanted someone to interpret his work, and the people at the foundation had seen my Klimt collection, where I work with Klimt's paintings, and when you look at that collection, you say, oh yes, that's Klimt, but you can't tell, oh, it's that painting. So they wanted me to, to find a new way to use Wright's designs to create something that was different but very special. And for me, the first thing that was important was color. And I want to show you these palms. These are some of the color palms that I started using when I first went into rug design. And what I love about these colors is that they're very soft, very grayed out, and they're all vegetal dyed. So when I was thinking about the collection, that was one thing that was very much on my mind. What sort of colors would look good today, but still be in keeping with the Frank Lloyd Wright aesthetic? And of course, the other component was design. Um, what designs would I use to create this collection? The foundation wanted me to use Usonian principles. Those of you who know Wright's work know that he wanted to make art available to people at all different levels. It wasn't just going to be very, very fine architecture for a very limited number of people. And this is why he created his Usonian homes to be more affordable for the middle class. So I decided on a Usonian collection that would have cotton flat weaves and floor cloths, and then my signature collection of hand knotted and hand tufted rugs that are made of the very finest quality. So to start my research, I went to Avery Library at Columbia. I'm very fortunate because I have a doctorate from Columbia and I'm intimately familiar with their libraries and I went repeatedly to Avery where the librarians would pull out Wright's own drawings and they were in plasticine but I could touch them and I could see where Wright changed his mind where he made erasures. I could see how he blended his colors. And the number of drawings available is truly staggering. The other thing that I did was to go to Taliesin West and to see the archives at Taliesin West, which is the home of the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation. And when I went out to Taliesin West with my sister, uh, we stayed at Wright Cottage, at Wright Sun Cottage, and this is the first uh, permanent structure that he built for himself at Taliesin West. And when we opened the door of the cottage and we saw that it was furnished with Frank Lloyd Wright furniture, it was really overwhelming. I had been interested in Wright ever since I was a child. I grew up in western Pennsylvania and my father had a furniture and carpet store and my older sister's an interior designer but she always wanted to be an architect. So we would go out to Falling Water. We lived very nearby so in all different seasons we would go and have a look at Falling Water and so I was very much influenced by Wright's work throughout my life. 
for the Schwartz House, which was a Usonian home, Wright created cutouts for the wall. And he used this in place of leaded glass windows because it was a much, le a much less expensive way of creating an interesting effect. Um, the open areas were filled in with clear glass. Here I've taken the pattern from the Schwartz House cutout. I've repeated it five times and I've added my own colors to it to create a beautiful floor cloth. I also took leaded glass from the Dana Thomas house, the butterfly pattern, which was basically clear glass with some amber in it. And I colored it to coordinate with the Schwartz house piece so that they could be used together. And here you can see a beautiful application for the floor cloths in front of a kitchen sink, since you can just use a damp cloth to clean up the floor cloth and it is waterproof. Similarly, I took a cutout from the Usonian Exhibition House, which was actually placed in Manhattan so that people could see the kind of idea that Wright had for moderately priced housing. And I took that cutout and recolored it. I used it four times on the cotton flat weave. And then I also made a custom floor cloth repeating the pattern five times. So you can see how adaptable these designs are. This is the Usonian flat weave. It's one of six patterns that I did. They're hand loomed cotton made in India. And you can see the entire collection on our website, classicrug.com. This is the Tree of Life floor cloth. And floor cloths are really wonderful products for the present time. They can be wiped off with a damp cloth. They can be sprayed with disinfectant. And once again, I did six different floor cloth patterns. You can see the collection on classicrug.com. And you can also see our video, which tells the features and benefits of floor cloths. The Hoffman House rug is interesting because Wright did the design for the Hoffman House itself, but the rug was never made. Later, um, that same pattern was used for a rug for Taliesin. So on the left, you see the actual pattern just in black and white. And then you see some color experiments that I did um, to see how the pattern would respond to different colorways. And in the end, what I did was this. This is the colorway that I finally decided on. Um, even though some of these colors may look unusual for Frank Lloyd Wright, actually most of those colors have appeared in his work. You can see that it's a very soft palette, but it still has some punch to it. And it's designed so that this rug will fit beautifully into today's homes. Hoffman is 100 knots, hand knotted in Nepal of New Zealand wool. The Lake Geneva pattern for the leaded glass was meant to remind people of tulips, but I took the pattern and I turned it 90 degrees and then I made a mirror image of it in order to create the basic rug pattern. And then I chose to do all of the grids in silk in order to emphasize the line. One thing became very clear as I was working with Wright's designs, and that was his love of a bold straight line and his love of triangles. If you look online at the Roby House rug at classicrug.com, you'll see that I took the Roby House rug pattern and added bold incised lines to it to create a, a very dynamic piece. Here you see the actual Lake Geneva rug. 
And again, you can see that I did all of the lines in silk and the rest of the rug is in New Zealand wool. And what I really love is the interplay of the light and shadow because when the rug is on the floor, there's going to be a mixture of matte and sheen that's so beautiful. I think that it's a rug that can be used in any number of locations within a home. Similarly, the Hollyhock House rug is based on a stained window design, and it's a leaded window, I should say. Um, the original is clear glass and lead, and I have added the colors. I chose to do all of the lines in a loop and the rest of the rug in a cut pile so that there's a textural difference. And then the deep blue and the copper color are done in natural silk. And when the rug is on the floor and it's well lit, this will look like gleaming stained glass. So the color selection is mine, not Wright's. But again, these are very much Wright style colors. This is a rug design that is from the David Wright house, the house that Frank Lloyd Wright designed for his son. And actually reproductions of the original rugs are still in the home today. And what's most interesting about this piece is the way that it's tufted. You notice how graphic this piece is. It's very different from the rugs that we've looked at, the Hoffman and the Hollyhock and the Lake Geneva, which were hand knotted. This is a hand tufted rug and it's done all in a loop. The field is a random weave, but with the elements, for the circles, I've used concentric tufting. Even the little tiny circles are tufted concentrically. The curved areas are tufted on a curve. The areas in the center of the field here are done on a vertical, and there are black areas down below that are done on a horizontal. So it's all about the direction of the tufting that creates such an interesting story. I did change a few of the colors. Again, this is a rug that was designed in the mid 50s and some of the colors would have been very difficult to use in today's homes. This rug was also designed to coordinate with my Price House Runner, which you can see online at classicrug.com. If you look at the Liberty cover design, the Suaro design on the left, I think you can see why I felt that this really had to be simplified. It's a great pattern, but no one wants all of that going on on their living room floor. So basically what I did was to cut out part of the image, drawing upon those bold squares and using them at different levels to create an irregular edge for the rug. As you can see, the actual rug is quite different from the drawing that we just looked at. But you can see that I cut out squares all along the top and then I turned and used them in a mirror image for the bottom edge of the rug. This rug was hand tufted in Thailand and so tufted rugs again are always very graphic and it's all cut pile and it has quite a lot of deep carving to accentuate the squares. Um, the center squares in the field were my addition to the design. I wanted something there to give it more interest. The irregular edge of the rug 
uh, helps to break that barrier between the rug and the floor. And Wright was extremely interested in doing away with the barrier between the outside and the inside. In some of his homes, he would use the same finish on the floor in the living area, and that would follow straight through to the outdoors. Or you would walk through a living area to a terrace, and it all seemed to be a seamless experience. So that's what I was trying to create with the irregular edge. For all of the rugs in the Signature Series, you can have any size. You can have different fibers. If you wanted to add natural silk to this piece, you could. Um, if you want to change the colors, we can also do that. In addition, I have the right to use virtually any Frank Lloyd Wright design. So if you have a favorite design that I haven't done, then I could do that for you as a custom piece, either in a hand knotted or a hand tufted. This is a rug that I'm working on now for a client. It's a custom piece. He fell in love with the rugs at the Meyer May and at the Hurtley House. And so we've really worked with both designs. And what I've come up with is something that is just a section of the Hurtley House rug, but made into an elongated square. And you can see in the image on the right that the colors are different in the Photoshop image on the left. And now you can recall those beautiful yarns that I was holding at the start of this presentation. What my client and I will do is to work with those yarns to choose the exact colors that we want for each area of the rug. And then we'll make a sample, a strike off of the rug so that he can see those colors in his home before the rug is made. This for me, is the most exciting part of my job. I love working with people who live in Frank Lloyd Wright homes or who are building Frank Lloyd Wright rooms or who just want a touch of Frank Lloyd Wright in their homes, but they want something that is truly theirs. And since I have access to virtually all of the Wright designs, I can create something that's a one-of-a-kind treasure for my clients. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to discuss my evolution alongside Frank Lloyd Wright. Again, the website is classicrug.com. You will see the signature collection in my booth at Cover Connect. And please get in touch with us if you have any questions. Thank you.